figure. Hiding tips 2023. Wash up everyone and welcome to episode two where I'm going to go into detail on the shelter's building menu, also known as the upgrade section. Now, as the main aim in Vigor is to upgrade your shelter to the max, it made sense that the community decided that this video should be the next one in the series. Now, if you want to get involved in the next episode's decision, stay to the end of the video. Let's get on with it. Something I have found out while recording is that if you are new to Vigor, once you have done the tutorial, you have to play Encounters before the menus are even unlocked. And even then, it's done in stages. The build menu is available after you have done two Encounters. These stages are brilliant as they give some information on how to progress within the game without being too overwhelming. Something I didn't have four years ago. Nope. One of the most common questions asked is, what should I upgrade first? There is no simple answer to this as it depends on how you plan to play the game. Are you a looter, a shooter or a mixture? So what I can do is explain everything in full detail then you can decide what you want to upgrade first. How do you get to the build menu? Anywhere in the shelter except the firing range. You can get into any of your menus by pushing up on your D-pad. Then you can navigate through them using your left or right bumpers. If you are very new, then you may find that some menus are still locked. The build menu is the house looking symbol. What does maxing out your shelter mean? You start off with an upgrade menu like this and you want to get it to this. I will warn you though, it will take a very long time and if you are like me and only play the game a few hours every evening, it can take years. What does it all mean? Let's take a moment to look around the menu and understand what it's trying to tell you. At the top, there are shelter levels and you can flick through them using your left stick and set the appearance with A if it's unlocked. You can see a picture of the repairs on the right hand side. Above this is a description with details of how many upgrades to the improvements you need to achieve to progress. Above the shelter levels you can see how many improvements you need to do to level up to the next stage. For your information, a map shelter has 291 improvements, but there is going to be a new shelter improvement coming this year, so that figure will probably change. Looking at the improvements themselves, you will see a mixture of colours depending on the stage you are at. If you are new and not collected many resources yet, you will only see the improvement symbols in either white and black or grey and black, set on a grey and darker grey background. If you have managed to gain some resources, you will probably have one or two improvement symbols in yellow as they are ready to be upgraded. If you have already tried an upgrade, then you may well see a green clock in the middle of your symbol, which indicates the build is in progress. For your information, the green symbols you can see on my Mac shelter is just that, an improvement that has been upgraded to the max. Before we go into the improvements in further detail, let's check out what the rest of the page is trying to tell us. <coughs> At the top right hand side of the page, you will see your material count. You gain these from encounters, crates and deconstructing. Materials are mainly needed for crafting guns, ammo and consumables. There is also an achievement to gain when you get to 1 million. Next at the top of the page is your food count, which is used for the charity boxes. This gives you weekly crates. Crowns, these are the in-game currency and can be gained with your antenna improvement or with crates. This shows the level you are at in your battle pass. Here you can see your gamer tag and team members avatars. As you can see, there are five slots ready for duos, trios or eliminations. You may notice that all the improvements have 13 stages except the generator which only goes to 5. 
If you move over an improvement, you will see that there is information on the right hand side, including what level you are at, a quick description, advice, what it does, what your next level will do, build time and the resources required for the next upgrade. If these are highlighted red, then you do not have enough. They will turn white when you do. If you have managed to already start an upgrade, then here in green, you will see the information reminder. Here are the owned resources and you can see how many you have in stock. Underneath are the button controls and most are self-explanatory, but one that you might be interested in is the track resources button. This gives you a paperclip symbol over your improvement and reminds you of the resources you need to get when you are out in an encounter. What are you doing? Do you want some pineapple? <laughs> okay, so let's go into more detail with the improvements. The crafting table. When you get plans, you will need certain levels of the crafting table to complete the process. Most people, well hunters, will recommend you concentrate on maxing this out ASAP, as it's very annoying when you get a plan for a gun or a consumable and then can't craft it as the table levels aren't high enough. The wood log. This produces materials which you will need to collect regularly from the side of the building. The materials are used for crafting. The water distillation. This reduces crafting time for consumables as well as the price for instant. The antenna. This produces crowns for free, but bear in mind that even maxed out, this will only give you 9.96 crowns per day. So, 69.72 crowns a week. You will need to go and collect them from the pole, which is out the back by the waterfall. The herbs. There are four boxes in total to upgrade and they generate materials which will need to be collected regularly. Materials are used for crafting. The rat traps. There are four rat traps in total to upgrade and they start as a metal tin can and evolve into proper rat traps. These produce food which need to be collected regularly. Food gets donated into the charity box, which then gives you crates weekly, depending on the amount you have donated. The planters. There are four planters in total, which produce pumpkins and will need to be collected regularly. The food gets donated into the charity box, which then gives you crates. Something to bear in mind is that once you get your rat traps and planters up to a certain high level, they will produce enough food regularly to give you crates every week through the charity box. Therefore, you don't need to worry about collecting food from the Outlands as much. Maybe someone can put in the comments below which certain level it is that produces enough for 10,000 food per week. The chemical distillation. This helps to increase what you get when you deconstruct items. The generator. This gives you the chance to upgrade more than one improvement at a time. The outhouse. This produces as such fertiliser for the planters and therefore increases their productivity. The utility room. This helps to reduce the cost of crafting for consumables. The smokehouse. This encourages rats, which then increases the amount of food in the traps. The scrap bin. This needs to be collected regularly from the bunker armory and gives you metal parts. This then helps with the other upgrades. The wind turbine. This helps to reduce the building time for the improvements when upgraded and also reduces the cost of instant build. Of course, when you start, you will be restricted with the improvements as they will unlock as you progress with your upgrades. Take your time to look over the ones you can work on and think about what is important to you. There is no right or wrong way to upgrade your shelter. It is your choice. 
but I would recommend that you take your time and decide carefully before you press that upgrade button because those resources get locked in and then you have to go back out into the encounters to get more and you have to survive as well. Good luck. I really hope that you liked the video and if you did it'd be awesome if you could leave it a like. I do have an idea of what the community want me to do in the next episode but if you want to get your voice heard comment below or in the discord. If you haven't already please consider hitting that subscribe button and uh, maybe leave those notifications on. I do stream on Twitch three times a week, Monday, Wednesdays and Saturdays, 6 till 9 at UK time. So it would be awesome to see you there. Okay, bye-bye for now. Ah, right, someone else, someone else, someone else. Don't be fat. Yes! Have that, you two! Oh, <laughs>